We're going to go through an example of generalized angular momentum. Um, this is taken from the 2012 exam paper, um, question 10, um, but I will actually give you all of the details you need so you don't need to have access to that paper. Um, I'm going to skip the early stages because those are all just book work. So the first question um, that we need to think about is we are given a system where little j is equal to 3 over 2. Um, so that's the, the spin of the system, the angular momentum of the system, and you're asked what are the eigenvalues of j squared and jz. Now the answer to that, of course, is um, for j squared, we have j into j plus 1 h bar squared, which is 3 over 2 times 5 over 2, h bar squared or 15 over 4 h bar squared um, and of course this is the same um, eigenvalue for all of the different eigenvectors of j squared for jz um, then we just have mj h bar in other words we have 3 over 2 h bar a half h bar minus a half h bar and minus 3 halves h bar <coughs> Excuse me. We are then asked to give um, a matrix representation of those operators, um, and these, of course, are diagonal um, with the eigenvalues down the diagonal. The eigenvalues are on the diagonal um, and zeros elsewhere. To save space, I won't write those out. Um, you're then given um, the formula for the j plus and minus, the raising and lowering operators, um, which is equal to jx plus or minus ijy. Um, and you're also told that j plus or minus acting on a state j mj gives you h bar times the square root of j plus 1 j minus m into m plus or minus 1 um, acting on the state j, mj, plus or minus 1. Um, and you're asked to find the matrix representation of jx. So we notice um, that jx is equal to a half j plus plus j minus. Um, that's simple algebra. Um, and then we simply consider what the matrix elements might be. Um, so if we take in general bra j m a um, and when I say m a what I mean is that that's going to represent one particular um, value of m and then I'm going to have a half into j plus plus j minus um, and then I'm going to have j comma m b. <coughs> so that's going to be a general matrix element for jx. Um, now we can split that up um, and we can write that as um, bra j comma m a um, j plus um, I'll put a hat at the front a half at the front um, j comma j m b um, and I'm going to add on to that a half j m a j minus j comma m b um, at this stage, of course, we can apply the formula we've already been given um, for j plus or minus. Let me just underline that in red. That's up here. Um, and that's the key thing that you really need to use at all times in this kind of a problem. Um, so now we end up with a formula which gives us a half. Um, we're going to have h bar. We're going to have the square root of j, j plus 1 minus m b into m b plus 1 um, and then I'm going to have delta m a m b plus 1 um, okay so that's the term um, that has come from this j plus um, <coughs> and what we're seeing is that j plus acts on the the ket j m b um, and increments m by 1 um, when we then contract with the bra j m a, we only get a non-zero answer if m a is equal to m b plus 1. Um, and similarly, we end up with plus a half h bar square root of j j plus 1 
minus mb into mb minus 1, um, because this time we're looking at the lowering operator, um, and we have delta ma mb minus 1. Um, and so these two are now equivalent. Now, what, um, what values of ma and mb do we consider? Well, if ma is equal to 3 over 2, um, and MB is equal to a half, um, then MA is equal to MB minus, sorry, MA is equal to MB plus one. Um, so that gives us um, an entry for J plus. Um, so the J plus entry. And if you work it through, you find that J, J plus one is always 15 over four. Um, and in this case, MB, MB plus one gives you three over four. Um, and so we end up with a square root of 3 h-bar. If ma is a half um, and mb is minus a half, then again we get a j plus entry. Um, and in this case we end up with 2 h-bar. Um, but if mb is equal to plus a half, then we get a j minus entry. Um, and in this case we get root 3 h-bar because mb is ma plus 1. Um, and we can carry on and eventually we find, I'm going to do this on the right hand side, that jx is given by the matrix. We have an h-bar over 2 out of the front um, and then we're going to have 0 root 3 0 0. We're going to have root 3 0 2 0 we're going to have 0, 2, 0, root 3, and we're going to have 0, 0, root 3, 0. Um, okay, <coughs> now the thing to remember is that across the top um, we have values of mb, so I'll put a little mb up the top, um, and down the left hand side we have values of ma, so I'll put a little ma on the left hand side there. Um, so the way that you evaluate these things is you set, let's say, MA equals 3 over 2, um, and MB is equal to a half. Um, I'll just highlight this one in yellow um, with a dotted line, um, and that's the root 3 that I'm, I'm doing just there. So that's where MA is 3 halves and MB is a half. So let me write MA is equal to 3 over 2, MB is equal to a half in yellow to emphasize the dotted yellow box. Um, the rest of that is fairly standard matrix algebra and putting together different elements. The question then continues um, and gives you a Hamiltonian. So you have H is equal to E0, which is some characteristic energy, divided by H bar squared into Jx squared plus jy squared. Uh, remember that the dimension of angular momentum is h bar. So if you have a j squared divided by h bar squared, that's dimensionless and you multiply by the characteristic energy e0. Um, we subtract off 5 e0 over h bar jz. Um, so this is a, a Hamiltonian and we're asked to explain why it's diagonal. Um, well, it's diagonal because we can write jx squared plus jy squared is equal to j squared minus jz squared. Um, that's a simple vector definition. j squared is equal to jx squared plus jy squared plus jz squared. Um, and both j squared and jz squared are diagonal. Um, so therefore the Hamiltonian is going to be diagonal. Um, we're asked to, to, sh to write h in terms of j plus and j minus and jz. Um, j plus minus and jz um, and that's fairly easily done by noticing that j plus j minus is equal to jx plus i j y into jx minus i j y um, now you can multiply that out and you can use the commutator and when you do all of that, you discover that that's equal to jx squared plus jy squared plus h bar jz. Um, 
A useful consistency check is to, again, look at the dimensions. Notice that we started with j plus j minus, so that's got dimensions of angular momentum squared. We end up with jx squared and jy squared, both of which have dimensions angular momentum squared, and the jz has a factor of h bar, so everything is consistent in that definition. Um, so now we can write h is equal to e0 over h bar j plus j minus um, minus 6 e0 over h bar jz. Um, and then the final part of the question asks you for h in matrix form. Um, you can derive this using either of the approaches. You can use the j plus j minus or you can use the original form in terms of jx squared um, and jy squared and jz squared. Either way, um, when you do this, you'll discover quite quickly that you end up with the following form. Um, h is equal to e0 um, into minus 6, 1, 6, 9, and you have a 0 off diagonal. It should be obvious how you derive that. Um, if you have any problems, do drop me an email. Um, I'm sure that I can explain it easily. This, of course, tells us that the eigenvalues of h, and hence the energy of the system, um, are minus 6 e0, e0, 6 e0, and 9 e0. Um, that's because h is diagonal, and therefore the diagonal entries must be the eigenvalues of the system. So you can see here how we've broken down um, a problem. We've looked at it in detail. The thing to remember at all times is exactly what the raising and lowering operators do. These are vital when you're creating matrix elements for quantum mechanical operators. Once you understand that, um, everything else is really very simple algebra.